What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And after doubling down, if you're following the story on the Salvation Army, they had um, some interesting training materials available to and taught to those that were quote-unquote Salvationists, which are apparently people that work for Salvation Army or something of that nature. Uh, they had this whole guide called Let's Talk About Racism. And in that guide, they had all the kind of typical woke language that you would that you've been seeing that you would see on a place like Twitter. I covered this, I reported on it, and several people from within the organization reached out to me very kindly, by the way, not adversarially or or condescendingly or anything like that. Just saying, like, bro, you know, the organization isn't what you say it is. Um, you know, we we see that this thing is there. Um and it sucks. It looks like it's just some fake corporate wokeness, which we talk about all the time here with companies like Blizzard and Nike. You know, Nike's all about equality while having their shoes made by, you know, kids in sweatshops. But, um, you know, and I covered them. I recovered it and said, look, the Salvation Army, you know, kind of doubled down in a way, but also, you know, said, like, look, you know, we aren't about that. We aren't, um, we aren't really trying to be that way. I hope that it's true, although there are several examples where they are kind of out there preaching like CRT related stuff. However, they have now quietly withdrawn the guide that in fact did ask their white supporters to apologize for their race. The group has withdrawn the controversial guide amid backlash from donors. Here's here's the thing. Here's I could use your help in all this because I don't want to be one of those people that never apologize, never accepts an apology, right? I don't think that that's healthy. But I have concerns when this type of thing happens and it's only after it gets discovered and it's only after that there is general outrage that suddenly they withdraw it. We saw this and have seen this many times with uh school like because of zoom parents because of zoom and working from home really parents became far more involved in their their kids schooling and rightfully so i mean a lot of people could argue that a lot of parents not all a lot of uh, were asleep at the wheel but now that they're working from home and they're listening to their their teachers the kids teachers and some of the things that they're saying now you have parents showing up at school board meetings. Do I want to do I think it's beneficial to admonish the parents for just waking up now? Or do I think it's better to focus on the fact that, all right, we're here now. We're looking into the stuff that our kids are being taught. And I think that that's the better thing to focus on. I think that it'd be better to focus on getting cameras in every classroom for parents to be able to see what is being taught at any given time. Because there's just far too many examples of insanity being taught to kids. Um, now with the Salvation Army, again, with the red kettle, uh, that you'll see everywhere. I, I hear at least here in the United States, outside of every grocery store at sporting events and malls, people ringing their bells, good hearted, great people out there donating their time for free to raise money for those in need a few pennies at a time, pocket change at a time. And by the way, it's even more difficult nowadays because nobody carries cash and money around, but it appears after doubling down, they have removed it. Now, if you remember, they issued this statement here. The Salvation Army's uh, response to false claims on their topic of racism. Now, I'll get to the update in a second here um, because that is important. You see here, you know, the holidays are a welcome reminder of things that we are grateful for and the power of service on behalf of those who are less fortunate. The Salvation Army mission statement clearly outlines the nature of our service to preach the gospel of Jesus and meet people's needs in his name without discrimination. The beliefs that motive our, motivate our service are based solely on the Bible, and that will never change. Look, regardless of where you're at in personal like religion and that kind of stuff, I think we could all agree that these are good causes, that helping people, um, you know, regardless of their skin color is something that we can all agree on is a good thing. Um, you know, there are a lot of people in need, a lot of people that 
need help, especially around the holidays. And a lot of kids, you know, that didn't ask for certain situations to be to be brought up and uh, brought up in. And there they are. Now, the Salvation Army occasionally publishes internal study guides on various complex topics to help foster positive conversations and grace filled reflection among Salvationists. By openly discussing these issues, we hope to encourage the development of a more thoughtful organization that is better positioned to support those in need. But no one is being told how to think, period. In this case, the guide, Let's Talk About Racism, was issued as a voluntary resource, but it has since become the focus of controversy. We have done our best to provide accurate information, but unfortunately, some have chosen to ignore those efforts. At the same time, the international headquarters realized that certain aspects of the guide may need to be clarified. Now, this is as close as you're going to get to an apology from a corporation or really from anybody who's been caught red handed. You know, in this particular case, I would argue that um, what they're really saying here is we're not going to apologize, but also we were wrong when they say there are aspects of the guide that need to be clarified. Uh, they mean changed. And we know this now because they've issued an update. Elements of the recently issued Let's Talk About Racism guide led to some believe that we think they should apologize for the color of their skin or that the Salvation Army may have abandoned its biblical beliefs for another philosophy or ideology. That was never our intention, so the guide has been removed for appropriate review. Slow clap. We could go one of two ways with this. We can we can still be outraged and say that they only removed it because they got caught. And I would understand people that want to feel this way. Or we could reward good behavior. You know, ultimately, if you don't forgive when people do this stuff, then they have no incentive to change their behavior. It's like we talk about in normal society when these crazy weirdos are demanding apologies from you. One of the earliest lessons I learned to, you know, dealing with outrage mobs is never apologize because they don't want your apology. They want to control you. They want to destroy you. If this is we're talking about cancel culture and nobody's covering this. And that's why it's important. I think I cover it and that you, you know, leave a like on the video and that you share this because you can see the one article I could find just the news dot com. No disrespect, but this isn't exactly the New York Times. Salvation Army withdraws guide that asks white supporters to apologize for their race. Salvation Army has withdrawn its controversial guide following criticism and donor backlash over the text that asks white supporters of the charity group to deliver sincere apologies for their race and past sins of the church. As a result, some of the guide's more extreme positions becoming public, donors and supporters across the country have been rescinding their support for the organization. This is good. This is what we're supposed to do. When somebody does something you don't like, if you have an option, you stop doing business with them. In the statement titled The Response to False Claims, um, you know, they said the 156 year old organization denies the purpose of the guide or subsequent discussions revolving around the guide were meant to tell anyone how to think. However, the group has also opted to withdraw the guide for appropriate review. The group is perhaps best known for collecting coins and paper money and red kettles outside the stores during Christmas holiday season with members ringing a bell. The statement also reads that the Salvation Army occasionally publishes internal study guides for various complex issues. Um, consequently, for both reasons, the International Social Justice Commission has now withdrawn the guide for appropriate review, meaning whatever little, um, you know, intern at the company um, who is, you know, spending a little bit too much time on Twitter a little bit too much time on their gender theories class. Looks like they got BTFO'd. That's what it looks like to me. It looks like this is a huge victory uh, for <clears throat> people who, and by the way, it shouldn't be a political issue, but it is. You know, people really need to continue to speak with their wallets. Support the content creators that you like. Def don't support content creators you don't like. Support businesses, local, hopefully that you do like. And you know what? For me, if I'm getting a taco, um, you know, there are a lot of places I can get that from. If one of those taco stands happens to be a, some sort of lunatic online, I could just go get a taco somewhere else. The more we do this, the more we'll keep winning. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.